Hey, welcome to the Electronics Lab. I want to show you three ways to use LT Spice to measure voltages and currents in this AC circuit here. First, I do want to say though that you can see me solve this problem by hand as well as see the free online open source textbook where this example came from in the links in the description. Now let's head over to LT Spice to start building this circuit. So here we are in LT Spice, so let's start putting these components together. Now, since I am showing you three different ways of measuring the voltage and current, I'm going to set up the voltage source for a couple of different outputs. So I'm going to set it up as a sine wave for the transient analysis, no offset 10 volt amplitude and 60 hertz frequency, and a 10 volt amplitude for the small signal AC analysis that we will also do. For the first analysis, let's do a transient response and then use the built-in spice.measure capability to measure amplitude and phase of the voltage and current waveforms. So I'm going to just drop in dot .tran here for the transient. And then when I right-click on it, I have the parameters I can set into it. So my stop time, I'm going to stop at 200 milliseconds. I'm going to start saving data right away. My maximum time step, I'm just going to set to 0.1 milli or 100 microseconds, and that should be good for the configuration of the transient. Now I need to set up a bunch of measure commands. The first three measure commands are going to measure time between events, and specifically I'm going to be measuring time between instances when the waveform rises through zero volts. And that command looks like this. There's .mez for measure for the transient analysis. I'm going to call it T1, and this is going to trigger when voltage Vs is equal to zero. I forgot to label it. I'll go back and label it in just a sec. When I set rise equals nine, this is the ninth time that voltage Vs rises through zero volts. And the target for stopping will be when Vs again rises through zero volts for the 10th time. So basically I'm measuring the time of one cycle. Let's add those labels in so you know what signals I'm talking about. So VS is there and VC is there. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is measure the time from when VC rises through zero to when VS rises through zero. So this tells me the time difference between those two signals. And then I can use the ratio of the time difference between the two signals over the time of one complete signal to get the phase. This measurement is called T2. It will start timing when VC is equal to zero, when it rises above zero for the ninth time, and it will stop timing when VS equals zero, rises above zero for the ninth time. And then I'll add one more measurement, and this one's going to measure the time difference between the voltage across the resistor and the voltage from the source. So the difference between Vs and Vc is the voltage across the resistor. And we're going to time from the ninth time that that rises above zero to the ninth time that Vs rises above zero. Now I'll do the calculations to get the actual phase. So this will be the phase for the resistor. Actually, let's do the phase for the, yeah, let's do the phase for the resistor. And it's a parameter that's equal to 360 times T3. So that was the time difference between Vs and Vr over the full period. This calculation will give me the phase difference in degrees. I'll do the same kind of thing for the phase of the capacitor. And then last steps will be to create measurement commands to measure the maximum voltages of each one of the voltages. This variable is Vs underscore max, and it's equal to the maximum of the voltage of Vs. And of course, we also want to measure the current, the maximum current. The phase of the current is going to be the same as the phase of the voltage through the resistor. But we also want to know what the maximum current is. So I'm going to go with the maximum current through element R1, which will be the same as the current through all of the different devices. And now, unless I made a mistake in one of these commands, 
I am good to go. Run the simulation. I don't actually need to plot anything out, but of course I can if I want to. What I do want to look at is the error log, and that's where all of these measurements are going to be stored. And here we go. What are the things that I care about? The phase of the voltage across the resistor, 79.2155 degrees. The phase of the voltage across the capacitor, negative 10.676 degrees. The maximum voltage from the source, 9.9986 volts. That's what you'd expect. It's 10 volts. The maximum voltage on the capacitor, 9.82337. The maximum voltage across the resistor, 1.85253 volts. And the maximum current is 0 0.370376 amps. So in summary, using the transient response with the measure function, we get these results. Now the primary advantage of doing this kind of simulation is that it's in the time domain. So when you display the simulation, you can also see the sinusoidal waveforms. But it also has a couple of primary disadvantages. First of all, there's a lot of typing to put in the measure statements, and it's pretty easy to make a mistake. However, as a starting point, I've put the statements in the description for this video, so you can use that to get going. Secondly, even with the automated measure function, it's hard to get the correct values. I'm not sure if that's because there's a measurement error or if the signal is still transient and it actually hasn't settled down to be, the, to be in the final steady AC state that it should be. So if you want really precise, accurate results, I wouldn't use the measure function with the transient response to make your measurements. So that moves us on to the second method, making the measurements with an AC sweep where we sweep at a single frequency. So let's go into this transient statement and we are going to change it to an AC analysis. Type of sweep doesn't really matter. We're only sweeping at one point. The start frequency is 60 Hertz and the stop frequency is also 60 Hertz run the simulation and this window pops up which gives us all or actually almost all of the values that we care about we've got the source voltage 10 volts phase of effectively zero degrees the capacitor voltage 9.82695 volts with a phase angle of negative 10.6747 degrees and the current you'll notice that the capacitor current and the resistor current are both identical whereas the voltage source current is the same magnitude but the phase is different that's just because of the way that the voltage source defines current direction. It's 180 degrees out of phase with the defined current direction for the capacitor and resistor. So those are actually reporting the same currents. The one thing that's missing from this is the voltage across the resistor. And it won't automatically show up here in the AC analysis. So we'd either need to rebuild this circuit, basically swap the resistor and the, and the capacitor, and then we'll get the voltage across the resistor, or do this calculation by hand. This voltage across the source minus the voltage across the capacitor will give us the voltage across the resistor. So the primary advantage of this is that it prints out all of your AC analysis, most of your AC analysis, in a nice little text window here. But the primary disadvantage is it only measures the voltages with respect to ground, so you can't directly put the voltage across the resistor into this nice output form here. So that brings us to our last method, and that's to do an AC sweep over a range of frequencies that includes 60 Hertz. And then we'll zoom in at 60 Hertz to get our measurement. So what I need to do here is change this AC analysis I need to do a number of points, and the point number doesn't really matter. Let's just do 10 with a start frequency of 60 up to a stop frequency of it doesn't really matter because we don't care about those frequencies. We only care about 60. So let's go with 600 and now run the simulation. Now I can add to this Bode plot here all of the voltages and currents that I care about. So let's go with the voltage across the source, the voltage across the capacitor, and then the voltage across the resistor. And the way that I add that is I just go and right click on the plot here, go into add traces, and I'm going to add the voltage of Vs minus the voltage of Vc. And that is the voltage across the resistor. And then one more signal that I want to add, and that's the current. I can add any of these, but remember the voltage from these sources defined going the opposite direction of the way current is defined for, for a circuit like this. So I click on the resistor and I get the resistor current. And don't worry about trying to read everything off the graph. What we can do is add cursors. So I can click on VS here, and then I'll drag the cursor all the way over to the left so it's measuring at 60 hertz. And then I can bring up the display here, and here's my measurement. I've taken it all the way over to 60 hertz. So at 60 hertz, the magnitude of the source voltage is 20 decibels, and the phase, well, that's 
femto degrees, so it's effectively zero degrees. The magnitude is not in voltage, as you can see, but this is in dBV, so it's a fairly simple calculation to convert from 20 dBV into the voltage measurement. And I'll show you how to do that in a sec, but let's go through and get these values for each one of these things I'm trying to measure. So we got 20 dB at zero degrees. Now if I click on the capacitor voltage here, this gives me 19.848 dBV at minus 10.674749 degrees. The source voltage minus the capacitor voltage, so the resistor voltage is 5.35 dBV at 79.32 degrees. And finally, the current through the resistor is minus 8.6 dBi with a phase angle that's the same as the phase angle for the voltage across the resistor. And here's a summary of those results. Now let's take a look at the source voltage to do the conversion from dBV into voltage. So if you remember, the definition for dBV is that it's 20 times the log of the voltage. It's the voltage over one volt, so you can ignore that one volt part. So if 20 log of voltage is equal to 20 dBV, we can use a little bit of arithmetic to figure out what that V is actually equal to. So what we can do is divide both sides by 20 and then go 10 to the power of both sides, take the anti-log of both sides, so that if anti-log of log of V will just be V, and then 10 to the power of one is simply 10. So 20 dBV is 10 volts. And we can apply this same algebra to figure out what all of those other voltages are in volts, and also that current. And for current, you do the exact same thing. It's 20 log of a current is equal to something in dBi. And then going through all of those dBV to voltage and dBi to current conversions, I end up with these results. So the primary advantage of doing this AC analysis with sweeping over a frequency range is that you can include the voltage differences. You don't have to measure the voltage with respect to ground. But primary disadvantage is you need to use the cursors to read the values from the voted plots. And since the values are given in dBV and dBi, you need to do the conversion into volts and amps to get your answer in a form that is more easily understandable. So I've done the analysis with LT Spice on this circuit in three different ways, and I'll leave it to you to decide which way works best for you. And don't forget, you can also see me analyze this circuit by hand, as well as check out the free open source textbook that this example comes from. Now that textbook covers AC circuits, DC circuits, communication systems, and maybe by the time you're watching this, electronic circuits as well. You can check out all the important links in the description. Thanks for watching. And I just got an important reminder from Hal Johnson and Joanne McLeod to keep fit and have fun.